Hi, so in this example, we're going to determine some probability percentages for three different scenarios. So if we read according to a survey, 10% of Americans are afraid to fly, suppose 1,100 Americans are sampled. So one of the main things that we want to notice in this first sentence is that they tell us that 10% of Americans are afraid to fly. The fact that they gave us in a percentage tells us that we have a proportion. So here we know it's a proportion because they gave us the percentage as the red flag. So if I go over to my flow chart for um, probability distributions, and that can be found in the course documents of our My Open Math course, that in under sampling distributions, if we're estimating a population proportion, then I have two requirements that I must satisfy, and that the sample size must be less than or equal to 5% of the population, and that this inequality is greater than or equal to 10. And then once those are satisfied, then I can begin the sampling distribution and then find the probability. So there's a few things that we have to do prior to actually even starting the problem. So let's go ahead and verify the requirements. Now, if they told us that the population came from a normal distribution, then we wouldn't have to verify the requirements. But, but the fact that they didn't means that they want us to. So let's go ahead and re, um, verify the requirements. And that is just as simple as stating the sample size, which is 1,100, and asking ourselves, well, is this less than or equal to 5% of the population? And in this case, it is all Americans. Okay, well, I think 1,100 is much less than 5% 5, uh, 5 of all Americans, so I would check that off. The next one is we want to make sure that the sample size times the population proportion times the complement is going to be greater than or equal to 10. So what this would say is that this would give us an approximately um, normal distribution without any sample bias. So if we go ahead, we notice that the population proportion given is 10%, which is 0.1, and so 1,100 times 0.1 times 1 minus 0.1, we can go ahead and put in the calculator. And when we do that, we should get 99. And this is greater than or equal to 10. So both requirements are satisfied. And we can go ahead, if we go back to our flow chart, now that these are satisfied, now let's go ahead and write out the sampling distribution. So the sampling distribution, so sampling, the sampling distribution is just ver um, identifying the mean and the proportion, so, and the standard deviation. So the mean with respect to a sample proportion is just equal to the population proportion given, which is 10% or 0.1. The standard deviation with respect to the sample proportion is equal to the square root of the population proportion parameter given times the complement divided by the sample size. Okay, and I could simplify this to just look a little bit nicer when I put it in the calculator. I wouldn't want to round right away because that could cause some rounding issues, but this will be good enough, so this and this. Okay, so again, here is A, right, B, and now it states, if I go back to the sampling um, distribution flow chart, I can go ahead and now use these three scenarios, if needed, in the normal CDF in the calculator. So let's go ahead and do that. So A states that what is the probability percentage that 121 or more Americans in the survey are afraid to fly? So because they're giving us the number of Americans and we have a proportion, we have to go ahead and compute the sample proportion. So the sample proportion is, remember, x over n. 
And so in this case, p hat would be equal to 121 divided by 1100. And we can go ahead and put that into the calculator. So 121 divided by 1100 gives us 0.11. Okay, and I'm looking for the probability percentage that 121 or more. So this means that we're going to be looking for the probability of a population proportion is greater than or equal to um, 0.11. Let's go ahead and draw that and see what that looks like. If I just drew a small little bell curve, in the middle is that mean with respect to the sample proportion, which is 0.1. We do know that 0.11 would be over to the right side, and we want or more, so we would shade over here. Great, so this means according to the flow chart that we will be looking for normal CDF with the sample proportion and then using that tail of 1E99 with um, mu and uh, the mean and standard deviation. So this would be equal to the normal CDF of 0.11 comma 1E99 comma D mean which is 0.1 and then the standard deviation which is the square root of 0.9 over 1100. Great, so we can go ahead and use any sort of statistical calculator to calculate this. Notice that I will have Desmos, and this is just a free calculator. We can use functions, distribution, DIS for distribution, and then we could do a normal distribution. So it does say that we need to put in the mean and standard deviation, and then we have to find the cumulative probability. So let's go ahead and put the mean, which was given to us as 0.1, comma, and the standard deviation was the square root of 0 0.09 divided by 1100. And since we wanted to find the cumulative, we would go ahead and look at our normal distribution here and see we want it from 0.11 to infinity, right? So we'll do 0.11 and then to the max. And in this case, it will allow us to leave it as infinity. So this will be 0.1345. Great, and then if we wanted, again, they ask us for the probability percentage rounding to two decimal places. So if we rounded this to two decimal places, it would be 13.45%. So that's A. B asks for, for the same type of question, except they want to use 165 or more. So in this case, we would still have the same type of sample proportion, right, except we would have 165 over 1,100. And if we simplified that in the calculator, we would have 165 divided by 1,100 and we get 0.15. Great. And so if I wanted to draw this over here, let's say on a small little normal curve, right, this would be 0.1. And 0.15 is going to be really far over here in the tail. It doesn't seem that way, but this standard deviation is a pretty small standard deviation, so there's not a lot of variation from this population proportion. So 0.15 is going to be really tiny in this tiny tail. And so when I have the probability that the population proportion will be greater than um, 0.15, that's just going to be equal to normal CDF. 
0.15, 1 e99, and then the same parameters, 0.1, and then the square root of 0.09 over 1100. Great, and we would just put this back in the calculator now and kind of use the same functions, right? So functions, um, distribution, and then normal distribution. And I'll put in the mean as 0.1, comma, square root of 0 0.09 divided by 1100 for the standard deviation. And we want a cumulative, so just click the CDF and then put the min as 0.15 and leave max as infinity, and we get a really, really small number. We get 0.166, blah, right, to 10 times 10 to the negative 8. That means there's going to be seven zeros before this 1. And notice that it's 1, 6, so it's going to look like this when I write it out. It's going to be point zero 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 two. But since they want it, again, in a percentage, rounded to two decimals, we can see even if we move this decimal over twice, it really doesn't matter because it's going to be 0.00%. Okay, so um, those are the first two. And then the last one just states in the 8% or less Americans that are afraid to fly. So if we go ahead and write part C over here, well, they already told us the sample proportion. They told us that 8% or less, right, which is 0 0.08. So if I just drew this here on a little normal curve, right, 0.1, well, 0 0.08 is on the right, and I, or less would be, shading to the left. So it would look like this if I wrote it out as the probability, right, of 8% or less of Americans surveyed were afraid to fly. So the population proportion would be less than 0 0.08. And so that would just be the normal CDF but to the left, right? So it'll be negative 1 E99, 2.08, and then the mean, which is the same, right? And then the standard deviation all over 1100, just like that. And so now we can use the calculator again. And once again, I just want to reiterate, I'm using Desmos, so it does a really good job of doing these type of calculations. You can, again, go to functions, go to distribution, and then hit normal distribution. So again, we're going to still enter point 0.1, right? The same, it's the same sample for all the questions. So, uh, and then the standard deviation would be the square root of 0 0.09 divided by 1100. And then we'll go ahead and click Find Cumulative Probability. And the min leave as negative infinity, but for the max, let's go ahead and put in that 8%, which is 0 0.08. So if we round it to four decimal places here, we can see we have 0 0.0135. 0 0.0135. And written as a percentage would be 1.35%. Uh, so moving this decimal over twice, we could see that it'll be 1.35%. And so what we're really doing is noticing that the problems change, but the methods really don't. I hope this helps.